Hello. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just a little bit late this morning because we had some technical difficulties, which happens sometimes when you're doing these things. So we actually are using Pastor Dean's iPhone. We couldn't get internet here. So, um, But we're glad to be with you, our church family, and other loved ones, people from different various places. We welcome you to be with us at this touch point that we have. We call it our TCC touch point and then teaching. And so uh, Joyce is here with us. Pastor Dean is with us this morning. And Joyce is going to lead out with some things concerning God's guidance by his spirit. And so we'll turn it over to her. Good morning. But first, I'm going to share something funny that just happened this morning. I was just sharing it with Karen Pope. So I'm getting ready for coming here. And um, uh, I was running a little bit late. Anyway, at, at one point, I reached for my makeup bottle, glass makeup bottle, up in my bathroom cabinet. And... I don't know what happened. It must have fallen out of my hand or whatever. And the plastic lid flew through the air. And I, I saw a splash to the left of me. I had my coffee mug sitting there. It was a perfect shot. It went all the way and splashed into my good cup of coffee. And... Um, well, obviously, I couldn't drink that, but it splattered coffee. I mean, on the counter, on my nice painted walls, on my antique wood <laughs> um, shelving unit below. And so, needless to say, it took time to clean up. And when, as I was doing it, I thought, I'm not going to look at the clock. The clock was right there. On the, I'm not going to look how late I am. I'm not going to look at the clock. So what I did instead, to the right-hand side of a little holder with different uh, scripture cards, and I kept, I would get ready, and I'd look, read that one, then I'd read the other, and trying to avoid to see how late I was according to the clock. And one of the scriptures was, the Lord will per perfect that which concerns you or relates to you. So as we were having these technical things, that's the scripture I shared with these guys. Thank you, Lord. You that's help. That's concerning <laughs> guidance, too. Yeah. For things in our that's life. That's good. You know, whatever it is in our life. Yeah. That we need guidance. You need the thing? He's going to say well, something. Well, I'll just say it this morning, or whenever you're watching this, there's, there may well be some things in your life that you need guidance. You need yes. a guide. You need direction on what to do or what not mm -hmm. to do and where to go, where not to go. Maybe it's concerning mm -hmm. a job. Maybe it's concerning finances, what to do or something or a medical thing or whatever. But uh, what we're telling you this morning is God is your guide. Yes. He, he will show you. Yes. And uh, that's what we're going to be sharing about this mm -hmm. morning, that he'll, he'll bring guidance and he will perfect that which concerns you. Yes. He will bring it to completion. Yes. But what, you need, what we need to do is give it over to him and then listen. You know, prayer is not just a one-way street. It's not us just talking to God and saying things, but it is a two-way street. And... Actually, you know, I just thought of something. The Lord dropped it in my thoughts before we began. We kind of got off track there with the Internet thing, but I felt I was supposed to pray as we began here. And so, Lord, we just mm -hmm. lift you, this Lord. time before you for each person that will be seeing this, hearing this, and needing direction in their lives, Lord, for something that... Um, you will bring revelation to them. You will reveal to them this matter of how you lead and direct us yes. in the issues of life and the things concerning our lives. 
And so we pray for the opening up of the eyes of our understanding to see this. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So the scripture today is John 16, verse 13. However, when he, the Spirit of Truth that's talking about Holy Spirit, has come, he, Holy Spirit, will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, that is, he hears from the Father, he will speak. And he, Holy Spirit, will tell you things to come. Now, uh, a little bit later, I'm going to go into some more things relating to that. But I'm first going to share my uh, personal testimony as it relates to that verse. Back in 1974, I was going to be graduating from Calvin College with an um, art education degree. And my college advisor, you know, months, months before, um, she was asking us to send out, I think I remember her saying as many as 150 job ap applications across the United States. Just send them out, she said. And I can remember when she was sharing that, uh, I just had questions. It was like, well, I don't want to go just anywhere. I, I have, I want to teach, but not in California or New York. You know, it was just like, I didn't really have peace. And um, when I was talking to the Lord, when I got alone with the Lord, I was talking to him. I just had the thought, you're not going to teach right out of college. You're going to work first, and then you'll teach. And that I had peace with. It was just kind of, but see, that was where it says he will tell you things to come. Um, I didn't know exactly how that was going to transpire. So I just kept putting that off, the thing of sending out all those. I had my job application ready. But the thing of starting to send it out, I didn't do that. And then um, it was time to prepare for my senior art exhibit. And I walked to Old World Art Gallery, where it was in a Breton Village mall, a small little mall, where I had been going for some time to get my art supplies. I just loved going in there. I like the people, I just like the atmosphere. So instead of buying my art supplies on campus at the bookstore there, for that year I'd been coming, I discovered it and I kept coming there. Well, when I get, went to the counter to um, pay for those, the owner was uh, there and she knew me by name. And I said, yeah, this is for my senior. She says, you're a senior? You're going to be graduating? Um, do you know what you're going to do? Or what? I says, no, not at this point. And she says, well, if you need a job, I would love to hire you here full time starting this summer. I looked at her. I smiled. I said, well, thank you. I'm honored. I'll consider that. And um, as I was leaving, I realized I had such peace. I had such peace with this unexpected, um, I mean, and I did talk to the Lord about it, but I had peace. So I went back and I said, I, I really have peace about this. I I shared with her, I prayed about it. Well, I didn't realize she wasn't a Christian. Well, yeah, she was strong Catholic. and But she was very respectful. And anyway, after I graduated, I started working there full time, loving it. It was a frame shop. It was uh, um, art supplies. But then there was beautiful artwork. Beautiful um, beautiful things. And so I did that 
And while I was working there, I would have worked there, well, I worked there in a year. And then as time was progressing towards the end of that year, um, somehow there was correspondence from my mom. I think she said, your cousin Jim, who's the principal of the Volga Christian School in Volga, South Dakota, is moving to a different school. And he asked me about you, if you had a teaching job yet, or if you were interested. So she says, if you are, you could just call him, let him know. So I I think I contacted him or sent him a letter and just says, hey, yes, I'd be interested in that. I'm working in an art gallery now, but, and very shortly, he actually sent me more information on any way I was hired. I ended up getting that teaching job one year after I worked at the Old World Art Gallery. And so it was exactly what the Holy Spirit had told me. He said, this verse says he will tell you things to come. When I says, I don't have peace about those 150 job applications. He says, it's because you're not going to teach right out of high school. You're going to work first and then teach. That's what happened out of college, yeah. So in regards to that, um, the Holy Spirit, our guide, Rick Renner says here in his gems book, Sparkling Gems, for this verse, he studied it, he's um, a scholar in Greek, he says this verse is telling us the Holy Spirit wants to guide us through life, he wants to guide us as we walk into the future. The word show here is a word for a guide who shows a traveler the safest course through an unknown country. That was very unknown to me, the thing of working full time at an art gallery and then beginning to work. I was actually hired as the principal of that little Christian school. Well, I did lots of teaching, grades five through eight, all subjects. This verse, he says, means Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to be our guide. The Holy Spirit knows the way we should go. He knows how to avoid every trap and every attack. He knows the safest and fastest route for us to take. When we are stepping into territory that is new to us, it is imperative that we let the Holy Spirit lead us, for he wants to show us the precise route to take so we can successfully reach that place God put in our hearts. I love that. Being led by the Holy Spirit is one of the privileges we receive as children of God. Romans 8, 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. That's the Greek picture of someone gently leading someone else. This means the Holy Spirit will lead us, but we must extend our hearts and hands to him first, for without our cooperation, he cannot guide us anywhere. Without the Holy Spirit's guidance, we're left to find our way on our own. This no doubt means we will waste valuable time, energy, maybe money, not to mention perhaps shed a lot of unnecessary tears along the way. The Holy Spirit sees what we can't see. Holy Spirit knows what we don't know. And he understands the best routes, the most efficient shortcuts, and the safest paths to take. 
since this is the kind of guide the Holy Spirit is, we would be wise to let him guide us. Isn't that good? You have something you want to say now? I can share more later. Okay. Well, no, why don't you go ahead and then I'll share it. Okay. I bet something just came into my thought, but I need to look it up. Okay, you're going to look it up? Yeah. So, um, we thank you, Father, for this. Your word says, Holy Spirit can be our guide. This is what we want. Or at least, I'm saying again, this is what I want. Um, I want your guidance, Holy Spirit. And if that's your heart's desire, just ask him to guide you concerning whatever. If there's something unknown ahead for you and you, you're, you don't know what to do, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. And then concerning the leading of the Holy Spirit, I just have a few little notes that I wrote down from other speakers that I've read or listened to. One of them is from Pastor Keith Moore relating to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He says, do what you do have peace with, but no more than that. Do what you do have peace with, but no more. Do what you know to do. I like that. And then Craig Hagen, that's Kenneth E. Hagen's grandson, just read this in his new magazine here for being led by the Holy Spirit. He says, this means if we ever get a check in our heart about doing something, we shouldn't do it. If something on the inside of us says, uh, this isn't the time to go there. This isn't the time to do that. He says, well, then don't. That's the guidance of the Holy Spirit. He said, as my grandfather, Kenneth E. Hagen, always said, to go against what that piece of the guidance of the Holy Spirit, it's like trying to take a bath with your clothes on. Awkward. Doesn't feel right. I think that's a good example. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now here's yeah. Steve. Well, just uh, a moment ago, I had some other scriptures, but then a thought came to, to my mind as Joyce was sharing. And it was Psalm 37, 4. And it says this, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. And he will bring them to pass. He'll, well, I've always seen that as that he'll give you the desires, he'll, he'll, he'll place them in your heart, and then he will give them to you. He'll, make, he'll bring them to pass. Verse 5. That's verse, yeah, and really the next verse confirms that because it says, Commit your way to the Lord. And uh, my side margin for the word commit says, Roll off. Onto, roll off onto the Lord your way. That means our way is the path we're going to take, the decision we're going to make about guidance, about direction for the future, for our lives. That's everything That's concerning everything. our lives, and it can be the major uh, events of life, defining moment decisions of our life, but it can be very simple things that actually can impact our lives greatly also. You know, a multitude of simple things in our lives can end up affecting our lives greatly. And what we've trained our hearts, if we've been delighting in the Lord, I mean, our reactions to things, if we train ourselves, we've been talking about that, that we need to, we're going to be doing it this coming Sunday too about how we need to keep our hearts, guard our mm -hmm. hearts. Yes. And how that makes such a big difference because out of the heart flow forth the issues of life and our even our reactions. I, I just thought of that 
professional tennis player. I don't know his name. I can't say it. I think he's maybe from Serbia, but he was, I think it's the U.S. Open that's going on right now, and he was, I believe, tabbed as the one that would probably win the U.S. Open. That's what they were projecting. But he, in one of his matches, he lost one of the games. And his reaction was just to hit, just lash out, hit the ball. And he didn't do it intentionally, but he hit the, a line judge with the ball, in a, in like in, in her throat or something. And But anyway, he was disqualified. But you think... How could that happen? And of course, the thing is, this is what issued forth. That was his reaction to the matter. We need to guard what we put into our heart because what's going to come out of our mouth, a lot of times it's what comes out of our mouth mm -hmm. uh, that makes such a difference. But delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Uh, in Psalm 112, verse 10, it says, the desires of the wicked will perish. The thing is, when we commit ourselves to the Lord, and I say Lord, His Lordship, that we look to Him as our guide, and we say, Lord, I want my desires to be Your desires. I don't really want my own desires anymore. I want Yours. What a difference that makes. And he will bring them to pass then. I mean, there'll be so much less frustration mm -hmm. if we can do that. That word delight, it's, I heard it taught that, that it's a, a Hebrew word for delight. It's like the picture, word picture of soft clay in the hands of a potter. Soft clay in the hands of a potter. That's like delighting ourselves in the Lord. When we delight ourselves to Him, not hard clay, but soft clay, not brittle clay, but soft clay. And that's what the Lord is doing, I believe, in this day. He's preparing us for many great things ahead. On Sunday, we had the word about a wineskin and the washing of the water of the word. You see, the thing is, the things that the Holy Spirit leads us in are not going to go contrary to the word. They're not going to go contrary to the Word. Some things we can find specifically, we know from the Scripture. I mean, it's spelled out pretty clearly that, uh, you know, that things we should do or be uh, aiming for are, are things that we should not. But a lot of things, the daily things of life, aren't that way. But when we are in the Word, it grows in us, it gets big in us, and we just kind of know. There comes a knowing and a confidence of what lines up with God's Word and what doesn't. The things that do line up with His Word. And that's for you and your life. Daily decisions. Moment by moment decisions. As we delight ourselves in Him, we yield ourselves to Him, not make ourselves soft and pliable to Him, and listen to Him. He'll speak to our hearts. You know, we are spirit beings. And God is a spirit. We saw from the Bible in Romans chapter 8, verse 14, that it says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And He leads us through our spirit. It says in Proverbs 20, verse 27, The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord searching all the inward parts of the belly. Our spirit man. God enlightens us and he guides us through our spirit. And of course our spirit is strengthened through the word. That's its food. That's spiritual food. It's not our minds or our bodies, but our spirit is the candle of the Lord. And yes, that's how God guides us. That's how he guides us, through our spirits. God does not guide us through our minds, first off, or through our bodies. Our minds are that which contact the intellect and reason realms. 
our bodies are in touch with the feeling realm and physical senses. We cannot be dominated by those. We cannot get direction in our life from those things. And even the intellect. I remember when I was in college, I, I was studying of someone that was talking about guidance. And what the, it was some written material that I was studying that was teaching on guidance. And when you're in college, of course, you have a lot of decisions and so forth that are out there. But, That's for sure. But what they were saying is, okay, take a piece of paper, just get a blank piece of paper, and on this side, write all the things positive for if you're making a decision like for a job or something like Joyce was talking about earlier. Put all the positive reasons and then on the other side, all the negative reasons that you shouldn't do this, you know, positive versus negative, and the side where you had the most, that's the direction you should go then. No, that's not what it is. You need to, I need to learn to be led by the Spirit of God, not by my intellect, and not being driven by what my body or my physical senses say. The spirit, our spirit is in contact with God. It's, it's not through our reasonings or our feelings that we discern God's direction for us and receive guidance. I think it was Kenneth Hagin that put it this way. He said, feelings are the voice of your body. Reason is the voice of of your soul or mind and your conscience is the voice of your spirit. That's interesting, isn't it? Did you have more to share? Okay, I'll just finish up on something here. If you can just receive these things, meditate on them, maybe you want, might want to listen to this again because it is so important in life. I think Joyce and I have shared before that we feel it's one of the most important things that we've learned in life as believers is to be led by the Spirit of God. Uh, and so, but often we might hear someone say, I feel like I'm supposed to do such and such, or I think that we should do this or that. But we can get in trouble this way if we haven't got the, gotten the knowledge and the knowing mm -hmm the wisdom from God first. And so what we need to do is we need to make time to listen, to communicate with our God. That's what you need to do. That's what I need to do. We need to make the time just to listen, to get quiet before Him. Talk to Him and listen to him. And of course, always make sure it lines up with his word. Yes. With the Bible. Yes. yes. Always make sure. Praise God. Possibly next time we'll see how things go. We may talk about what we call the inner witness next time. Pastor Dean, did you have anything to share at this point? I'm uh, just looking at looking more here about God, <laughs> making us one. Can you see over there? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Only not my iPad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. <clears throat> Philippians 4. And, uh, Verse 15, you yourselves also know, Philippians, that at the first preaching of the gospel after I left Macedonia, no one shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving, but you alone. And he's talking here how they came into partnership with him. And there's a beautiful thing about partnership. When we enter into a spirit of agreement, we can be we can partner with 
with each other in our work for God. And then the blessings that come through that union flow into our life. If you receive a prophet in the name of a prophet, you will receive the prophet's reward. The blessings of that anointing on the prophet will come into your life. If you receive a righteous man, you know, in the name of a righteous man, you'll receive a righteous man's reward. If you receive who they are in Christ, their prayers are powerful and effective, wonder-working in their ability. And Jesus said, if you receive me, you receive the him, him who sent me. We receive Jesus and the fullness of the blessings of the Father come into our life. Hallelujah. And so there's a great value in partnership. Not only do we uh, supply, you know, help the ones that we're partnering with and we support them and love them, pray for them, encourage them, financially support. But then also there's a blessing that comes back into our life. And these unseen things are real in God's sight. And he is, he is so faithful. He is so faithful. So we appreciate, you know, partnership with TCC, but with Pastor Steve and Joyce. You know, you're, you're, you're partnering up with their call. And, and that's a blessing for them, but also the fruit of their ministry comes back into your life. And we grow together. Amen. That's kind of what I wanted to share. So. Okay. I'll just close here with a few updates on some things. Uh, this Sunday we'll be having our service here in the church house. And that will be for children as well. Children's church. And uh, we want to welcome you to come. Yes. That's it. Like I yes. say, 10 a.m. And uh, come, wow, well, what, what a presence of the Lord we were experiencing, oh, yes. the glory of the Lord last Sunday. Yes. We ended up having a couple worship times, one at the beginning and one at the end, and the Lord's presence was so special. I uh, heard reports from a number of people that they confirm that. And, uh, but anyway, that'll be Sunday. Oh. Pastor Dean, in a moment I'll have you share about the School of Ministry. It's, it's on the bottom there, just to refresh your thoughts. But also, the forge that starts tomorrow night. Now, you still have time. This is a... It starts at 7 o'clock. It's a True Bridge Network Church's um, live stream online ministry school. And it's, again, called The Forge. And you're invited to participate. Uh, so go to Country Faith Church, Clearbrook, go to their website, and then uh, on the upper right-hand corner, I believe it is, The Forge. And click on there and you can get information about how to sign up for that. Uh, but it begins tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Pastor Larry Dorman will be teaching an Old Testament survey. And then, like we mentioned, Pastor Dean will be teaching later on in the session that I think that's maybe in the winter time he'll be teaching. Um, so, and now we'll turn it back. Well, yeah, for giving, um, Post Office Box 67, 10 Strike, Minnesota is where you can send checks. That's the 10 Strike to TCC, 10 Strike Community Church. Or go to our website and there will be a donate. Uh, icon there that you can touch. And, but Dean, Pastor Dean is going to share about that school of ministry that's coming up. Yeah. Yes, we're uh, next Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, we're doing uh, school of ministry. We're focusing on 1 John and talking about dynamic principles of life and ministry and how they, you know, our ministry comes out of our life who we are in Christ and our walk with him. I keep putting stuff in front of me. <laughs> <laughs> and that we're going to do a Zoom meeting as well as live here. So classroom setting, but also on Zoom. So if you can join us either way, that would be great to have a number of people that expressed interest. So 
encourage you to jump in, join in, and we'll be studying mainly just the Bible without other material. And hopefully we want to have uh, dialogue and interaction. I'm not sure how Zoom works or that kind of thing, but I think it's good. So uh, I'll be sending out the addresses for the Zoom meeting uh, pretty soon. And if you would like to be included in that, let me know. Send me an email or email the church and just ask for the link to the Zoom meeting. Or you can call or text me at 553-0634. 553-0634. Amen. I'm looking forward to a good good fall with that. So. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Well, we'll see you on Sunday. Bye. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye.